Okay, well, happy Thursday morning to you all. It is uh, June 10th this morning, about 7.30 in the morning. I'm headed out for a uh, breakfast meetup and then a work commute uh, up to the Woodlands area, so it'll be a bit of a ride. Um, still trying to wrap up all my work stuff. This is one of the items that uh, I'm trying to at least get queued up because uh, it's a new client engagement and uh, we're not really going to do anything yet. This is more of a survey, uh, but this is going to be something that happens right at the beginning of August when I come back from uh, my road trip. So just trying to queue it up. Queue it up, get it ready to go because I'm going to be uh, definitely hungry for some work when I get back from this trip. <laughs> and being off work for a whole month plus all the expenses of the trip itself I don't think the trip is going to cost me very much money other than just you know downtime loss of productivity uh, but the travel expenses are going to be pretty minimal because I am moto camping you know, probably over 90% of this trip sleeping in the dirt wherever and uh, then we will catch a hotel every few days to wash our clothes and do whatever because we're traveling pretty light on this uh, probably carry one change of clothes maybe an extra spare of something you know extra shirt extra socks underwear whatever but jeans shirts that kind of stuff really just one change uh, we can uh, wear the same clothes for two or three days it's not a problem change out and that gives us just enough time to uh, wash the first set while we're wearing the second set wash those out let them dry and uh, continue lather rinse repeat so hotel expenses will be pretty minimal uh, Adrian and I will probably uh, you know room at the same hotel I don't know if we're gonna share a room or anything like that we might get our own individual rooms we're not really trying to penny pinch and be super super cheap uh, but obviously managing the costs is always a concern when you have a long trip like this food costs will be uh, not insignificant but not really a huge thing I don't think uh, we'll be eating on the road you know sandwich places whatever uh, try to minimize the fast food junk food kind of a thing but we'll be getting probably a decent lunch every day while we're out and then maybe some kind of a very light dinner is what my plan is anyway uh, probably won't be doing breakfast uh, other than just very quick stuff in the mornings as we're packing up you know have some coffee maybe some oatmeal something like that to tide me over for a few hours um, but you know, there's not going to be any uh, extravagant camp cooking, any of that, because we won't have time. We're going to be uh, setting up, tearing down, setting up, tearing down. So it's all about maintaining the schedule to get uh, up there and back. And The return trip, we could take our time, but chances are, once we've been out on the road for three weeks, we're going to be uh, you know, moving a little slower, wanting to you know stretch out the days a little longer but at the same time not prolong the trip any any further we'll probably be ready to get home so we'll see how that turns out i've done uh, many many cross-country trips and really long road trips before but never on a small small bike like this uh well at least not of this uh distance or duration uh back when i was in my early teens when I first got my motorcycle license, I did a uh, multi-state uh, moto camping trip <laughs> on my little Honda XL125S. That was a, that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we covered probably 1,800 miles or something like that. But this is uh, this is in a whole new league of crazy. We just ha or I haven't done anything uh, of this consecutive uh, duration you know uh, so many long days back to back to back you know I've done it for a week at a time or maybe two weeks at a time but this is gonna be almost a month every day turning about 400 something miles Woo. it's gonna be a challenge so we finally heard back from uh, Joel at Kip Moto uh, he was working on a custom 
trailer mount hoop for us uh, to fit the Super Cub and the Trail Cub. And uh, we we're really sweating it, hoping he was going to be able to get that done in time so we could take the the Surepacks trailer on our trip with us. And it looks like he's able to make it happen. So thank you, Joel. Uh, he sent an email yesterday saying that he thinks he's got it wrapped up and he's ready to ship the stuff out. So we should be receiving that uh, second Surepax trailer and the two mounting hoops uh, sometime, hopefully next week, early. I'm not sure how hot and fast he's going to send that out, but you know, a few days from uh, Canada, BC up there. So next week, that means we're going to be uh, hooking up the trailers to the Cubs and I've got to do my exhaust. Ugh, it's steamy this morning. Um, I've got to do my exhaust, put the trailer on, we've got to do the wiring harness for both bikes and uh, get that hooked up and play around with it, ride with it for a few days, make sure that uh, everything is behaving and performing as it should uh, before we end up out on the road. It would suck to have a problem with those shortly into the trip and then have to send them back home or something because we won't be going back home, not unless there's just catastrophic failure of some kind we're gonna tough it out hell or high water yeah right there are two or three bumps that would normally have compressed that rear suspension fully and bounced me up out of the seat handles it just fine now I've had quite a few uh, YouTube viewers uh, reply back to me, owners of the Rebel, uh, saying that uh, they adjusted their suspension after watching my uh, videos and said it made a huge difference for them. So I'm glad that could help somebody because uh, I was really annoyed at this bike when I first took it on the highway. That first day, I got bounced out of the saddle three times on the way home. I was like, oh, this is not good. just shipped too soft period and then on the other side of that coin I've had uh, one lady reply back to me uh, said that uh, she's about a hundred pounds and she rides a rebel 1100 well oh, I bet that thing goes like stink with her on it uh, but she said the the rear setting factory setting of uh, three is good for her weight so yeah I, I can imagine that's probably about right so for anybody 150 pounds or higher you should add some rear preload to this bike probably at least two clicks get it up between five and seven and you'll uh, notice a drastic difference in how well the back end of it handles and none of that would have been a mystery if they had uh, stated that there were 18 or 20 clicks uh, in the owner's manual but it's not there so I, that's another point. I've had quite a few people tell me that there's only 18 clicks in it. So maybe when I was cranking mine, I was actually spinning on 18. You know, 19 and 20 were actually still 18. So I don't know. But that's as high up as I got it was 20 clicks. So. And from what I could tell, there are about 90 degree uh, increments on that collar. That means about five turns worth of uh, preload. Yeah, I'm liking the saddle. Uh, I didn't think I was going to like it the first day I put it on there, but uh, my butt is more accustomed to it now, or maybe the foam is breaking in a little bit. Uh, at first it felt really firm, but now I, I don't even give it a second thought. Uh, it feels like it has a little bit deeper of a cup to it than the uh, original saddle and uh, I fit into it pretty well. I'm not a big guy, so I don't know, maybe I got a little butt or something, but uh, it, it fits pretty well. I haven't really noticed the, the forward uh, position. It's supposed to be the custom forward, which moves the rider one inch closer to the bars. Maybe it has. I don't really notice a bar reach difference that much, but you know, maybe I'm just used to it now. I don't know. 
but the saddle itself feels okay. I'm not, uh, I'm not disappointed. I might still put a cover on it, uh, whether it's one of those mesh uh, water slash air breather covers or a full seat pad like the uh, Airhawk, I don't know. The uh, Cruiser Large that I have, I don't think is going to fit this very well. I haven't laid it on there. I'll try to throw some pictures up here for that. See what it looks like. If it hangs over too far on the front, back, or sides, then yeah, it's just not going to work out. I'll have to get a smaller one. Oh goody, time to play in traffic. Stop all lanes, not good. I wonder if I should uh, go up a, another mile or so and come back. This looks like crap. Ah, it's rolling now. So I'm still planning my route. <laughs> I'm such a procrastinator. Well, I've been busy, so it's not like I'm just ignoring it, but uh, I'm still planning my route for the uh, trip up to Maine. Uh, we haven't done any planning at all for the trip back, uh, but we're not really concerned about that. That's gonna be loose. Uh, it's just the trip up there. They're gonna coordinate a little bit with uh, a few other riders uh, to try to meet up on the way uh, to, you know, kind of do joint ride up, and uh, we'll see how that goes. The uh, there are a few that are up there, kind of in the northeast a little bit, that had talked about uh, wanting to partner up on the way in and you know maybe share campsites that sort of thing. Uh, and they've sent me messages. Just uh, I think yesterday I saw an email. Uh, saying, hey, you know, let me know what your plan is because I'm trying to finalize mine. <laughs> Man, I hear you. I, uh, I haven't even gotten to that yet. I need to work on it. I don't like over planning these things. I like over prepping, but I don't like over planning the route uh, as far as miles and distance because then you end up rushing and it kind of ruins the trip, at least in my eyes. Uh, I mean, granted, there are uh, certain distances you've got to meet, you know, cumulative goals, that sort of thing. You gotta, you gotta make a certain number of miles down the road, but uh, I don't want to be beholden to a hard, fast schedule. Uh, I've got to be here at this certain time. And the only one of those that I want in the whole trip up there is the destination. I want to be in Bar Harbor on July 10th. So I don't care what happens between July 1st and July 10th. It gives me 10 days to get up there. I would think that that's easily achievable, uh, you know, barring any kind of uh, mechanical problems or road disasters, whatever. Uh, the trip up there is 2,300 miles-ish. Uh, it depends on how many little detours we take for scenic roads, uh, but somewhere around 2,300 miles. So, you know, you break that up across 10 days, and as long as we can cover 250 miles a day, we're already ahead of the curve, so that should not be a problem. So I will uh, try to get that schedule worked out, at least the rough itinerary, uh, where the, the route that we're going to take, the, at least the rough outline of it. Uh, timings will be a little bit up in the air, but uh, just the, uh, the path that we're going to traverse. I'll have that sorted out and uh, I'll post that information for anybody that wants to uh, join up along the ride. You know, we'll, we'll try to keep in contact through uh, Instagram and uh, quick little YouTube posts and emails and whatever else we need um, to uh, make sure that everybody knows where we're at in case you want to join. That'll be a lot of fun.
I ate at this place yesterday. Uh, I've been coming to this little shopping center now for well over 20 years to eat over here at Smoothie Island or Island Grill. And uh, this new Trinity Street Food uh, is a really good little uh, Thai food place. I like it. Uh, I ate lunch there yesterday. I had some uh, chicken pad Thai. It was very tasty. I was impressed. So I'll have to come back and eat there again. Alright, let's get back in here before somebody else steals my spot. This thing's so easy to back up. It's low center of gravity, just waddle it back. Of course, now with this uh, triangle bag on here, it makes it a little tougher. Okay. Time to go inside, get some coffee, get some food, and uh, I'll catch up with you all in a little bit. Okay, so breakfast is done, and we're about to head out to uh, go up to the woodlands. He's going to stop back by and pick up his helmet and riding gear. He just uh, jumped out here to meet us for breakfast. He was running late. Uh, someone stole his truck last night. He's got a... Uh, I don't know, two or three year old uh, Chevy pickup truck and it got uh, stolen overnight from his parking garage. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. So he was dealing with the uh, insurance stuff and all that nonsense this morning. And uh, luckily it has full coverage and all that. Who knows about the gap and all that, but anyway. Almost paid off. He said he had four payments to go and it would have been paid off and now uh, <laughs> He's doing a full loss uh, insurance claim the Truck has OnStar so they've already turned it in to the police and OnStar to start tracking it and all that find out how that turns out All right, so off we go head up to I think it's Kingwood or I'm not sure where we're going but it's up in the Woodlands area about 30 miles from here got to go up and survey this network and figure out uh, and come up with kind of some recommendations for uh, server network upgrade for them in the middle of the street. Okie dokie.
this guy below that red line. Like the exhausts on uh, my R1 have gotten twisted a little bit. They're not symmetric or straight anymore. One of them is turned funny. I guess the mount has gotten bent or something. I need to get in there and twist that around, straighten them up. They're almost facing the same way, but this one's lopsided. Now that one's actually up too high, it looks like. Let's fix that. footer <laughs>